Hey, welcome back to the Signature Movement. It's your girl, Tanya D. Floyd. And um, I want to talk about part of the single mama saga that I usually keep to myself. But um, yeah, it's pretty much a necessity that I talk about it now because I noticed that I got these little snap, crackle, pop situations. Missing links is what I call them when my head just starts breaking off in places. I know it's stress. It's stress. Because I, I take care of my hair. I wrap it up every single night. I got some, some stuff up top going on too. What is with this gray being disrespectful like this whole? What? I'm, this is not what we came here to talk about. But they just... Mm. What? But anyway... So I got these short pieces that are breaking off around my crown and my face here. Um, yeah, it's 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 basically that I've been holding in some stuff I should probably let out. So I'm gonna have a conversation with you today and hope that you know we can relate to each other and connect. It's like you know, just look. If you have school age children. Maybe you need to talk about it too, cause the way things is going, it's um not healthy for anybody. Now I know some kids are actually thriving, even though we're in this distance learning situation. They're getting good grades and hitting the honor roll and all that, but some kids, not so fortunate. For instance, tell me in the comments, please, 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 if anybody's having a problem with their special education students in distance learning i think my situation has a few layers to it because my son is a sixth grader he just transitioned to middle school he is on an iep which means he receives special education services and he has um been on distance learning since march of 2020 so we we've been dealing with some things we've been knocking them out well, I thought we were doing okay, but we not doing okay. I'm not doing okay. Okay, let me tell you what's going on. So, with the IEP, you have literally a contract with the school system for the services and tools they're going to provide for your special education student, right? It's written down. You sign it, and they keep it on file, and all the teachers are supposed to abide by it, right? I have found that in middle school, or maybe it's in this middle school, I don't know, but in middle school, it's a little different. They keep trying to explain it to me. They didn't tell me about this when he was leaving elementary, because we, we did a whole meeting, strategizing, put the right words in the contract and everything. We did a whole situation about getting him ready for middle school, and they never brought this up, so I think it might be exclusive to this particular middle school, but... They tell me about the middle school model. That's what it's called. The middle school model of special education isn't as individualized, which is the I and IEP, as um, elementary school because they have what they call co-taught classes, which is a special education teacher within the classroom with the regular teacher who helps with educating the special education students, right? Okay. Theoretically... That could work, depending on how you roll it out, but I don't think it's being rolled out right. So, let me just go through this. So, anyway, he has co-teachers in his core classes, like math, reading, science, and social studies. And then the other classes, ain't nobody there, just the teacher, and they doing the regular thing, right? But when you have this IEP in place, your teachers are supposed to follow the rules of the accommodations that were made for you as an individual with a special need, right? Okay, my kid has a compound disability. He has, he was born with a genetic disorder that affects him cognitively, physically, emotionally. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a whole onion. Layers, 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 okay? Um... Part of his, well, and let's back up. When you pick 
a reason for why you need the IEP or when you all agree in the meeting that he should get the services or whatever and you choose what is the nature of the disability, you get to choose one. Even if you got six, you pick one. So we picked one. I'm sorry. They picked one. And I, I said, okay, because it was one of the actual ones, but they thought that was the most pressing need at the time. He was in second grade when we found out he would need it at all. So back then he needed that. Okay. So follow me, follow me, follow me. I know I didn't want to drag this out for five minutes, but somebody out there is getting ready to start with this process or is in it and, and it's not going away. I, 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 allow me to just, you know, work with me. So anyway, compound disability, right? So he has a list of services he's supposed to get. Um, one of those is a dedicated aid, which means that it's literally somebody's job, some human being's job to shadow him all day, every day and make sure he stays on task, make sure he understands, make sure he does his work. It's, it's the assistant all day. Okay. But he hasn't had one since school started this year. And I keep saying, um, what's the status on that aid? Well, Cause I can't be the aid. I'm the mother. And I know some people look at me and think I don't do nothing all day, but I don't sit at home and do nothing all day. I got a multifaceted business I'm trying to run. You know, one thing I told my son um, this year, actually, I told him, I want you to do your work. Like, if you don't do it, somebody's just going to come take everything you love away from you. So that's the kind of business I run. I run it like somebody going to come try to take everything I love if I don't do my work. So, no, I can't sit and watch him all day because somebody is going to come try and take everything I own if I don't do my work. So, yeah, get that aid and let them sit there and do their job. Okay, got that out of, out of the way. Um, some of the other things he's supposed to get is, like, extra time on assignments and um, especially on tests. He gets, like, double time to take the tests. Oops, just, just, you know, layer, 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 onion, onion, onion. So, let's just suffice it to say, it ain't working, okay? Because in the beginning of the school year, I sat down and said, hey, um, I noticed some things missing. What are we doing? And they tell me, basically, what are you talking about? Like, they're not familiar with the plan. So, I found out they weren't familiar with the plan. How is that possible? How do you not know? Well, let me write it down for you because I'm very well versed in the plan. I helped to write it. So here's what we need. When are you going to start that? And they like, oh, we doing part of that. That's not how we do things. No, we not going to do part of that. <laughs> mm -mm. So they like, oh, okay. And then they carry on. So it ain't take but a few weeks for me to say, oh, they not hearing me. So I started writing emails to people like the CEO of the county school system because you find out who would need to go to directly. I'm going to go to the top every time. And this is for business of any kind. If you have a problem with the business, don't write to the level of the people that you got a problem with. Go to the top and let them filter that thing all the way down to the bottom where it's supposed to be. And then let them know because they're going to put a timetable on it. They're going to put a list of deliverables on it, which means they're going to have a, th a list of things that need to happen before that deadline and who to follow up with. And they're going to follow up because that's their business, right? So I emailed the CEO. You had a town hall talking about all these things you want to know. If we got questions, I got questions. Yep. Wrote a long email. That's what we're doing. we missing all the, the buttons for my kid. I understand we're in a pandemic. I understand we got some stuff going on that nobody's ever experienced before, but none of that's my concern right now. My concern is you're not going to leave my son behind in the sixth grade. He just got here to the school with these people, and y'all not going to act like you know the whole story because you just met us. But if you got some questions, come ask me. I'm ready to help you. They ain't do it. But she did refer me to somebody in special education to help me out, right? Okay. We had some conversations. They understand my expectations and how we falling short on those expectations. So we're going to fix that, right? We talked about it. We wrote it down. It ain't fixed. We in the third quarter. So 
For the last couple of weeks, I've been um talking myself off this camera because I had a whole bunch of bad words that was going to preface every statement and they were going to be all the adjectives for all the people that I had been dealing with, you know, some bad names for these people, which isn't fair. So I haven't picked up the camera until today because I'm, I'm calmed down some, <laughs> but we still not doing it. Yesterday, I had to point out to somebody, oh, one of the policies is if your student, they have these short days or whatever. If your student doesn't do the assignment for that short day, they marked absent. I'm going to need y'all to go back and take all them back because my child gets extra time to do his assignments, which means you can't mark him at the end of that day. You got to wait till the next day and mark him for what he did or didn't do. And then, you know, one of the things teachers should be doing is um let me know especially since we dealing with a kid who could easily fall behind because he has a multi-layered disability right let me back up a little bit so i never told my son he was disabled we about to i'm gonna start a fight somewhere with somebody it's okay i'm used to it i never told him he was disabled i mentioned that he has ADHD, which is a part of the thing. Um, you don't know about ADHD? If you don't have it, great. But what it does a lot is um, it. children with ADHD will have limited or no impulse control, which means like if whatever dumb thing they think about doing, they're just going to do it. They're not going to say, oh, I shouldn't do that. I'm going to get in trouble. They're just going to do the dumb thing. And then you're going to say why they do the dumb thing. And they're going to be like, I don't know. And you're going to be mad, but you can't get mad. You got you to use your impulse control. And you got to say, I understand what I'm dealing with. And um, I'm going to have to approach this differently. So you can't just jump in there and be like, you know better. No impulse control. Okay. The other part is focus. Inattentive. Attention deficit. Okay. I can't focus. Oh. Something just happened. You done said 10 things over here in class. I didn't get none of that because I was over here. I saw something out the window. I heard something upstairs. I was eavesdropping on my mother. Still, class going on. I just asked you to do so-and-so. Um, and he like, hmm, you did? But they going to keep moving because they got objectives to meet and you know, they have a time frame to get all that done and this, that, and other. And they, ain't, they don't know about the plan, remember? They not working the plan. That's not a priority for them. They not on the plan. The plan is only important to me <laughs> at this point, remember? So, how many zeros did we accumulate? A lot. Um, then, when Miss Floyd get on the computer and starts saying, Hey, um, I was looking at these grades. What is this? And they go, well, he ain't done none of the assignments. He don't log on to do uh whatever the supplementary thing. They go to these websites or these apps or whatever. He was in class, but he didn't do none of the work. Oh, how many times did you let that happen before you said, Miss Floyd, he's not doing his work? Oh, you still ain't said nothing because here it is third quarter. And today somebody said, oh, he never does his work in my class. Whose fault is that, Miss Lady? So now Miss Floyd is fuming because we six months into this year and y'all still not working the plan and you letting that boy fail. <sighs> I'm going to go with no on all of that. So Miss Floyd is losing her head because she's not trying to be like she usually is. And because I'm processing a lot internally instead of letting it out. Because when I let it out, I'm going to be hurting some people and we're going to have to fight about some things because they're going to be offended. Because I'm the kind of mother who, I'm sorry, I'm the kind of person. Before I was even a mother, I was always a um, little bit obsessive about things, a little bit anal about things. So I'm a very, very attentive to detail type person. So I keep good notes. I remember things visually that I've seen. I remember what I heard. I'm sharp with mine. Don't play with me. Okay? Basically, that's what I'm trying to tell you. 
the people keep playing with me, even though I got good notes. Now, I never talked about this, but part of my work history is I worked in the union office at my good government job for some years. So basically what I did was I represented employees who had issues with management, which means, yeah, I got a good filing system. I got a good knowledge of policy. I got great research skills and I got a good way of arguing my point. And I'm a hell of a writer. So I will A, B, C, bullet point you to the max. Okay. You don't really want to go with it with me. Because now what I'm doing is I'm building a file on you. It ain't nothing else to do at this point. I have told people many, 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 many times what's expected. I done gave them the document. They All they had to do was read it. They know what they're supposed to do, but I don't know why they're so overwhelmed that they just can't get this this piece together. I feel like a real lackadaisical attitude coming back whenever I say something to these people. They just act like I'm just being a pain in the ass, and that's that. No, that's not that. We're not done yet. Hold tight. I got you. So now I got to go over here and use my union skills to mount a, a whole offense against you because you let my son get these E's and these D's. We should, I don't have to deal with that. What's wrong with y'all? Some teacher going to say, you don't understand. The parents don't get blah, blah. It's not my job. I don't have to care about that. I'm doing my job. You do yours. Whose job is it to make sure we meet in the middle? I don't know, but they ain't doing theirs either because we ain't meeting. Ain't no bridge right here. I'm over here by myself trying to get this done. And you over there acting like I didn't say nothing. It's not working. So, no, I don't feel sorry for you. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Look, let me tell y'all something. I told you the boy got ADHD, right? Hold on. Attention deficit. Part of his disability is an emotional situation. So, anxiety, um, some form of depression, different, different things that are no good for young people to feel. So I'm over here attacking all the all the things from all the angles and dealing with the psychologist and the counselor and everybody saying, I understand how you feel, Miss Floyd. I don't want to hear that shit. No more. I want to see some results because that's what we do here. Again, if you're going to do a job, do it like somebody waiting to take away everything you love if you don't do it right. That's how I roll. So let me show y'all. This is what they do for the ADHD kid. Instead of, oh, by the way, every class, somebody on there saying, if you don't get this done today by the end of class at 415, you're going to have a zero for the day. And on them short days, you're going to have a zero and you're going to be absent. So those start accumulating and they start making, you know, the failure thing a little more imminent because now you got a whole countywide issue because you were absent this many times. Okay. But y'all not reading the plan to say, um, by the end of tomorrow, he's supposed to have it done. So you didn't get him all these zeros, right? Mind you, here we go with this ADHD. So you take the emotionally disabled child and you tell him he's going to get a zero if he don't do, finish the work that he never understood you to say. Oh, um, did I break down the cognitive part of the disability? He has a reading comprehension problem along with, um, he doesn't really process information the way we do. When you hear something, you might hear it and respond. When he hears something, he need to hear it and see it at the same time. Then he might respond properly. But it's a whole bunch of wires not connected properly, right? No, I did not tell him he was disabled. I told him he can do his best. And at every time he has a question, every time he has a concern, every time he has a problem, he's supposed to speak up. So we've been working on that advocating for himself thing for a long time. But now that we're in middle school, they don't really call your mother like they used to in elementary. I'm learning middle school is not at all like elementary. And the fact that when you was in elementary school, they used to sit there and tell your mother every little thing you did, send you to the office or whatever. And there was always some rotation of people who were there to help you and do things for you and make sure you can succeed. But in middle school, they just drop your ass off at the curb and be like, all right, fight or flight, swim or sink. So on you. No, it's not. Nah. 
So anyway, let me show y'all something what they do for the ADHD student with the um, emotional disability. This is what they do all day, every day. Hold up. So check this out. Oh yeah, I got smart and I started hijacking my son's email account. So this is, I haven't checked this phone today, but let's check his email. So all day while class going on, they saying stuff, they doing stuff. I got these dates. Oh, that's today. So all these emails came today. Back up out of here. Get out of here. All these came today while he in class. Some of them came in the middle of the night. Look at that. Yesterday. All these came yesterday. Let's keep going. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Day before yesterday. So this all this week. How many emails is this for the ADHD kid with the emotional disability? And that was from last week. But still, let's see. How many did we get in one day? 22nd? What was that Monday? Yeah, Monday. So how many emails we get from these teachers on Monday? This many. ADHD with a learning disability that includes reading comprehension. So here's the schedule. In school, supposed to be listening, trying to remember what they said when you have an auditory processing issue, which means you can't really remember or understand what you heard the first time. So you're telling him whatever it is in the classroom. Y'all might be reading something, and he's supposed to follow along while you read aloud or whatever. And then you send all these emails at the same time. While they're doing independent assignment, you done send them five emails for that one class. And then you have a chat box in the classroom. So when he's not paying attention, somebody might send a message. Are you listening? Are you here? And he's going to go, yeah, I'm here. That's it. He just there. So he spent six hours in class with a 30-minute lunch break. And at the end of that class day, you want him to have had every assignment done because you sent it to him while you was in the classroom on that email, in that classroom. And you wanted him to remember what you told him. You want him to have the assignment for that class period. Then you want him to just transition in 10 minutes to the next class and listen to what they said and do that assignment or those assignments and that little thing y'all do in in the um the little games or whatever that's the only part he care about by the way those games so you want him to do all that stuff and then you want him to do homework if you got homework but if you didn't finish the classwork it's probably homework but you gotta do about 4 15 or you're in a zero so he just spent six hours of his life learning nothing and getting a zero y'all know you don't even have to know me to know that this is not cool. Fly! We ain't living like this. Look, I saw the report call for the first quarter. I was meeting with a bunch of people, a bunch of officials from the county in education, special education, blah, 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 about this IEP. And two quarters in a row, you let my son fail some stuff that he shouldn't have failed. Where's that aid? It's literally somebody's job to make sure he does his work understands what they're asking him to do and get it to him on time which is extra time for him later than everybody else but y'all keep acting like you didn't hear me hear me i'm not playing with y'all i'm coming for you anyway i just wonder if there's another parent or 10 or 20 any parents out there who are having the same kind of issues are our special education children being left behind because they don't have the time and energy to focus on that because they got other stuff, more important stuff to do. But who's more important than the ones who are disabled? Aren't they supposed to be the first consideration anywhere? If we all boarding the plane, don't they get to go first? If we all getting off the damn plane, ain't they supposed to go first? Or well, at least get some help. Where's the help? Where's the priority? What is going on here? Please, somebody explain it to me. Matter of fact, you can make it sound real good, intelligent, and all that. It could probably be logical, but I'm still not going to accept it because it is what it is. We got a contract. I need you to do your job. Okay? So, yeah, hair falling out because I've been, you know, not saying all the things I want to say in the way I want to say them. And, um, 
yeah there's that so special education children are they getting what they what they need what they need are they getting what they're supposed to have is anybody else having a problem and if so can we get together who we gotta write this letter to let me think about it i'm gonna come back with that but like who we supposed to i'm always trying to start a movement i don't even know how it came about but it must have been my union days I was always trying to, you know, start a movement back then, too, because they were like, you know, there's a process and these steps you got to take. Da, 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 da. I get that it's a process. I used to tell my clients that all the time. It's always a process. You always supposed to start here with this letter or this comment to this person. And then you elevate it to the next level and then you elevate it to the next level or some stuff. If it was a, a certain kind of grievance, like a personnel um, like a discrimination kind of thing or something. You don't even have to go one, two, three with the steps. You can go from one to all the way to the top. Look, this was happening over here. This, these people ain't acting right. I'm going to need to get your managers in line. Same thing. Speak up for your kids, for yourself, whoever. I don't play that with these people. You're not going to tell me how I'm going to live my life in I'm like, oh my head, where I had it. I don't, I don't have, I don't like this at all. I'm not living like that. I need you to do your job like somebody coming to take away everything you love if you don't do it right. 